Well, if the birds had quit trying to talk over me. Uh, the rake is pulled up to the shed door I brought it up with me when I came to the farm. Uh, looking at it, I thought I had some rubber teeth. I do. I really do. I mean, it's... I had a, a viewer actually sent me a, a small bundle of them. And they were right down there. And they are no longer there. So I'm going to go ahead and say that they were placed somewhere where we could find them when we were looking for them. Which is probably Never Never Land. And we're never going to see them again. Uh, the reason I'm talking about the rubber rake teeth instead of the metal rake teeth. I think you guys can see from the tooth that I'm holding. That's yeah, going to haunt me for the rest of the day now. I thought I, I knew exactly where those teeth were. And I was just going to grab a couple and throw them on the rake, but it's already noon. And I got places to be and work to do. But here's the problem. We were told originally uh, we wouldn't like the, the metal teeth, the spring teeth, because they break. And then we're going to be dealing with broken teeth all across the field. Uh, that was a risk we were willing to take. Uh, it went the other way. The spring, the metal that the springs are actually made out of, the teeth are made out of, it's soft. So instead of breaking, it bends. That's good if you don't want broken teeth all across the field. It's bad because Dad was raking with it the la with the rake the last time we were down at the valley, and he wasn't even going through any heavy material. Um, it just he got in some even ground and it bit the dirt just a little bit, and he bent like four teeth on that revolution and tried to straighten them out, and thus we can't um, come to the conclusion really didn't take a whole lot to to get to that point uh, but if these teeth are that that much of an issue that soft uh, we're just gonna go right back to the rubber teeth I'm not gonna go through and change them all out I mean right away things are gonna look probably pretty pretty goofy here but I'm gonna get a bunch of the rubber teeth ordered the good ones not the the light cheap rubber which I found this one and it looks kind of cheap to me I'm not even really sure I don't even recognize this tooth I mean it's it doesn't have any it has rust on it but it doesn't have any of the other any color on it to give me an idea if it's off the grandpa's deer or the new Holland but I'm just gonna carry a bunch of teeth with us and either swap them out in the field if we need to or like I just told dad and Ryan when this happens if this happens take them off and do that with them they're junk they're no good to me if they're gonna do that they just simply aren't um, I was I was bailing when dad was raking and dad wasn't in any severe running conditions at all there there was no reason for for those teeth to to bend like that it'd be one thing if i mean we were in rocks or but just a little a little mound of dirt is all it took and it it bent it in all sorts of directions so it's gonna be about 500 dollars for the good teeth uh to change this rake back out which goes right into my original statement of not going to change them all out right away. I'm probably going to order 30, 40, 50 teeth, and we'll change them out as we need to. This rake um, is pretty well getting to the end of its, of its use limit for this year. I have some waterways down at my place, which I really bought this thing for doing waterways and then the heavy material down at the valley. That turned out to really not be that heavy. But the waterways down in my place, um, I'm going to be cutting them one more time at the end of the summer. Um, the plan is to really get cut in the next week or so what we what we can get cut, so we can get some regrowth coming back, and then making fence and working on the combine and machinery for the month of August. And then we get to the end of August, first September, go through, make all the hay that we can get made up, everything preferably, 
and then hopefully more than likely uh, the way the crops are looking uh, harvesting soybeans in September that is the current goal right now so let me get back caught back up with you certainly isn't what I did for the rest of the day but it's what I actually did to finish out my day beautiful weather and the camera I just set on the ground because I did not grab the right camera mount and my only option was to kind of balance it on the ground about 100 feet away from where I was working. This hay has been made for a little over a week and a half now and it's actually really nice stuff. Um, you guys can kind of see, um, I got this whole video sped up to about four times regular speed so you can see the bobcat buzzing around like a busy bee. But they're calling for a chance of rain tomorrow night and that's to the point this stuff has heated out, done its thing. Uh, when it comes to the hay preservative, um, Harvest Tech, the applicator itself is awesome. I really like it. It's convenient. It's not a hassle. I don't sit and cuss it every time I have to use it. It's actually kind of enjoyable to run as long as you keep your maintenance up. Um, the hay preservative itself is expensive. Yes, that's kind of a, a hurdle you have to get over, the fact that you're trying to keep your, your hay quality up and keep your hay from heating and, you know, quality issues go downhill rather quick if you don't, you know, manage your your material, material properly. So putting on a pretty heavy amount of hay preservative, kind of steep learning curve for the first time you use it. I'm very confident that if I wasn't, um, if I could go back and make my first crop back in the first of June, um, I honestly feel like it would have turned out a lot better than what it did. So um, I am fairly confident at this point that I didn't put enough on at the time. Um, actually, when you start reading the fine print, I mean, that's when things start to get really interesting in some of these products that farmers use. Um, the, the directions right at the top of the label, uh, you got to take it for face value. Um, once you start reading down through all the fine print and even the finer print, it actually tells you, okay, if you're using this, um, say you, you're aiming for eight, um, it was eight pounds to the ton, which is uh, just under a gallon to a, a ton. So my bales average about 1,600 pounds. The material or the, the fluid, the product is 7.77 pounds per gallon. So too late to do the math right now, but that's the that's what you're supposed to use. But back to the the hidden directions. Um, the additional advice is if you're going to be making hay that has been rained on, just it says right in the label, if it's been rained on, um, factor X, Y, Z, and more. Um, if you are planning on stacking this in a poorly ventilated building, which let's face it, most of my buildings uh, to their standards are probably poorly ventilated because they basically want big open vents in the side of your sheds and uh, we don't have any sheds that are built specifically for storing hay. I mean a lot of these sheds, eh, it was more like it, it can hold hay but largely we're building it for for cattle. I mean they, this these sheds are, are rented sheds but um, basically what I've come to the conclusion is the directions on the label of the tote for that hay max basically says you can't put too much on and I'm only using the red nozzles. Uh, there's actually red, green, and blue, I believe. And I originally thought I was gonna be starting with the green, but that means you're running at a lower pressure. And to be honest with you, I would rather run the smart, smaller nozzles at a higher pressure. And my, my um, cheat sheet on the controller for the, uh, the applicator, um, it only actually gives you uh, pounds per hour up to I think is it 80 pounds or 80 psi and I can rev that thing up up to almost a hundred so it's not an exact science I grant that I probably could should be doing a better job at keeping track of it but when your hay tester that you have um, is pretty unreliable I'm gonna go right ahead and say it um, I've tried and tried and tried I've done it different ways the way people tell me to do it um, it's inaccurate and so I automatically, the way at that, you know, at this point in my life, uh, 
plan for the worst, hope for the best. So me planning for the worst is treating all this hay like it's been rained on for two weeks and it's going to be stuffed in the back of an old, damp, humid cellar. So uh, definitely seeing improvements after I've kind of gone that way with this hay preservative and I'm this hay as long as you leave it set out to air out dad and ryan did a really nice job of setting these bales up here from the bottom um they're spaced out at least a foot uh plenty of air able to breathe between them and that allowed the the bales to sweat do their thing um, they're going on two weeks i'm not worried about it i mean the only downside to them is the fact that when i store them in the shed um, i stack them on end which I mean, there shouldn't be any water issues in the shed. I just addressed that right before I started this video. But, again, it's been sitting outside. All these bales have been sitting outside. So when I set them up on end, there is a wet, dark spot from the bale sitting on the ground in the net wrap. And the problem is when you're making this stuff to sell, uh, one of the things, one of the factors they actually use against you when they're, you're selling hay is what it looks like it's 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 curb appeal it's eye appeal plus you know the quality of the feed that's there um, that's why i wrap with as much net wrap as i use i use three we always used to use two but the problem is we handle this stuff so much that three wraps is honestly the bare minimum you would want to use and not to take away from what i'm saying but you guys see that i'm st uh, stacking these other bales that i'm grabbing right now um, not in the shed i'm actually stacking them on the concrete uh, I'm picking those out for cattle feed, so I'm picking and choosing what bales need to need to go where. The bales that are going in the shed are for you know for quality for for sending down the road. Um, I'm as of tonight, I have plenty of of cow feed. I mean, I'm sitting really good. The cows aren't going through as much feed as I thought they would throughout the summer. But the stuff that I'm picking up, you see the far bales. They are kind of smaller. Uh, that was the field ground. That was the the grass and clover mix that is through the field i hate clover i do not like it the cows love it so i pretty much come to the conclusion it doesn't yield that great i fertilized everything heavily uh we're gonna wait and see another 45 days or so did i say that right 45 mm, yeah 45 days um and see i'm on the back side of it now i'm picking and choosing i mean it's it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're just watching me and you don't understand where i'm going and what i'm doing but i'm picking the bales depending on what they look like if the net wrap is good if the net wraps not torn um, the hay the feed that's in it is is worth selling um, if it's not if it doesn't look pretty it's all good excuse me it's all good feed I mean even the field ground um, it's clover clover likes to turn black and those bales even though they look smaller and I'm stacking them out along the feed bunk they're heavy uh, they are probably heavier than these bigger ones that on the far left of the screen. Uh, they've been rained on. Well, the feed actually wasn't rained on, but was it? No, I finished in the rain. That's the stuff I finished in the rain, but the stuff packed really tight. I mean, like, like really tight. And every time I set those out for the cows, I fed out a couple already just to see where the cows are at and if they're willing to eat it. Um, I hold myself to a pretty high standard when it comes to quality of hay to sell, to keep, and everything else like that. And maybe I shouldn't be doing that so much, but I don't want to sell junk. I don't want to feed junk. I'm out of video, believe it or not. I, did, I thought I could talk more. Dang it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Take it easy. Keep in touch. Stay tuned for next time.